I'm a, I have always been a journalist for more than 40 years, actually. Uh, and now I'm a professor of journalism at the School of Journalism. And we do research in new digital journalism, new news models, uh, people who start their own businesses, but also journalists who work for incumbent media. How do they use social media? How, how can they uh, develop their network uh, uh, using new media technologies? But also things like video journalism. Uh, we w like to think that we want to make our, our st students future-proof, which is hard in a school because everything changes except, except the curriculum. It's one of the things that is hardest to change in this world, the curriculum of a school. Uh, not of a school of journalists, it's probably of every school and all schools dealing with that, but it's not an easy thing to do, to put it mildly. So we are cutting corners, doing things outside the curriculum, uh, stuff like that. I made half of the presentation uh, on the airplane. It's a short ride from Amsterdam to Bristol, actually, and half of them during these two days, because I picked up a lot of things yesterday. I picked up stuff this morning. So if there are any typos, uh, it's your fault, because you gave so me so much uh, new information. On the left, you see the smallest newspaper in the Netherlands. It has a, a circulation of 10,000 copies every day. And it employs one journalist. Uh, he was trained by me, actually. So, uh, and he, we were once sitting in a, in, a, in a meeting. And he said, I'm the journalist for the Barnevelse Krant. And somebody said, you are working for the, you are a, a, you are a journalist for the Barnevelse Krant. No, he said, I'm the journalist for the Barnevelse Krant. Three years ago, the Barnevelse Krant, who had something like 15 to 20 people working for them, sacked them all. They tried this model with the magazines. They do professional magazines for agriculture, for travel, for uh, uh, automotive. And uh, they got rid of the whole editorial department. They kept one on, and he was called a content manager, and everybody else could deliver content or gather content. Somebody made a comment on Twitter, I think. We used to call it journalism. It's called content now. And it's, it is a, has meaning, this different stuff. So they, they have one journalist for, uh, you know, when there's a fire suddenly breaking out or there's something to do or a long interview. Uh, so they assign them to. And all the rest has done by the others who were sacked and could apply for their role job on new conditions, of course, meaning less money, unless they worked harder and worked for different, com uh, for different uh, uh, companies they could earn more money. But this is the model. And actually, it caught on in the Netherlands. This is Libelle. It's the, one of the largest uh, women's magazines, weekly magazines. They, it was owned by Sanuma, a Finnish corporation. And they did more or less the same. They sacked almost everybody. And they call it flexibilization or something else, but it's basically sacking everybody and say, OK, you can apply for your own job. You can do this, the same stuff. Uh, we have some sort of arrangement. We keep you on for one year and, and, and buy everything you make. But then we move to different. Uh, uh, and this is done everywhere. ANP, the Dutch press agency, sacked all of their photographers. The, when we talk about new journalism job, one of the old fashioned jobs that don't exist anymore is the staff photographer. We don't have them anymore in the Netherlands. Or maybe one we forgot to sack. <laughs> so this is what happens in, 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 in media jobs and in media. It doesn't always is a bad negative development, actually. One of the photographers said, OK, I'm very good in hockey photography. So why won't I work for the sponsor, the big bank who sponsors all the hockey? Because they have a magazine themselves. Actually, he makes more money now than he did before. So it's not always a, and some of them are, you know, uh, suddenly have to be very innovative and do new things and develop. Other, uh, okay, I can make video if I'm there and have a camera. A camera is good enough to make video as well. So you, they develop new skills as well. It's not a happy story for everyone. If you worked for in a newsroom for 30 years, it's probably particularly hard to uh, adapt to a new situation. So what we see here, I made a list of. Job descriptions I found in, uh, we, we did a big research. It's, it, I think it was published in Journalism Practice last year. 
and we looked for job descriptions. What do we need? And we see things like that. We need news managers, news directors, curators, meaning finding content somewhere else and then translating and reworking it in your own content, which means the only content you have is your own, is media content from, some, for, from another source. So you don't call anybody up, you don't do extra research, you just rewrite stuff. We have people in the Netherlands re, uh, doing stuff like that. They write 10 articles a day on Bolivia, on housing, on sports, on everything. And they use one source for their stories. It's called curating. Uh, community managers, you know, finding in the community people who have stuff. Uh, can I use this photograph? Can, can you uh, put something on the, on the website? So not writing stuff, but finding stuff. Well, content, 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 content. Content harvester is a phrase uh, coined by uh, David Montgomery. He said, we don't need journalists. We need content managers who harvest content. And on the bottom of the list is the journalist. We call him a content creator. There's not much demand for that. OK. So there is change in what journalists do, wh how they do it, and also where they do it. Uh, it's not only in journalism, I should say. Uh, I work for the Faculty of Communication, and we see the same trends in design, photography, uh, data visualization, people who design stuff, who find uh, data, who can work with data, who code, um, uh, who make apps. Uh, who do in education as well, we have a lot of freelance trainers. Not so much in communication, actually. In communication, you're working for a company or for, a, uh, for an NGO or for, a, uh, for government is usually uh, a very traditional job. We see f much less freelancing in that area, but also in arts and media. You know, once talked to a lady in a bar and said, what do you do? I said, I'm a poet. Yeah, I'm a waitress as well, she said, w which is also a business model, of course. Um. What do media do? Uh, in the Netherlands, but probably in the whole Western world, we see something like this. We see downsizing of stuff. Uh, I can't find any medium who does the other. Uh, uh, some digital media, they hire staff, but most of it is downsizing. They do outsourcing, meaning stuff. A good example is the financial newspaper in the Netherlands who do very well, but it's a, the only people we keep on the staff is the people who do financial reporting. So we do arts, we do sports, we do, and everything is, that is not our core business, we outsource. So you can write uh, fashion. Uh, articles for us, and we buy them if we if we like it, but we are not keeping you on the staff. So this is this is the, you know, they outsource everything that not, doesn't belong to the core business. They outsource everything that they can outsource. Sometimes they offshore it, meaning doing it in another country. You know, having sub editing done in Australia, in 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 Bolivia. We do, you know, typing of uh, of interviews. You know, you have two hour typing of interviews. I send it off to someone in Cyprus. And for 12 euros, it gets back, you know, 12 pages of, it's imp I cannot do that for 12 euros. But it's back in one day. I'm happy, they are happy, offshoring stuff. Uh, flexibilization is, is the big word. You know, we, we, are, we are in for a flexible workforce. And we use volunteers, particularly in hyper-local uh, areas, in bloggings where we use a lot of free labor and free content, actually. What do the workers do? Uh, they are freelancing stringers. The Telegraph, the biggest newspaper in the Netherlands, sacked all of their foreign correspondents and hired them back as stringers, except for the one in New York, the one in London, and the one in Brussels. But the other 15 were gone. Uh, we see a lot of people doing independent work, entrepreneurs, a lot of temporal uh, work, a lot of part-time work, diversification. If you're very good at photography, they do video. If you're very good at video, okay, you can train other people to do video. If you, if you have a good website, you can train people to make another website. If you're very good at, at content, you can do an event on content. You could make a new consultant. I knew a guy who was a very good uh, ukulele player. And he started importing ukuleles from China and, and selling them, which is diversification within your content. Sidestepping, I would call, you know, if you do other stuff outside your occupation. And a lot of journalists do that. You know. Uh, being a tour guide, being a waitress, being a yoga teacher. I know all kinds of people who do journalism and stuff like that. So sidestepping is doing st stuff outside of journalism. And there are some you know, uh, types in between. 
if you know a lot about Italy and you want to be in, uh, write about Italy, you can also be a tour guide in Italy, which is a between sidestepping and diversification. I present four cases here that we researched. Uh, this is downsizing. I told you a little bit that newspapers, magazine, online media, they all go for the flexible skin, as they call it. So a core newsroom, a small core newsroom, and outsourcing of this will be probably the dominant model for magazines and, new and newspapers, and, uh, but also for, for digital, uh, uh, a small newsroom. They could fit in one floor with sales, with marketing, uh, photographers, designers. Um, there is a research by the Dutch Union of Journalists, and they expect 70% of the journalists being freelancers within the next five years. So one of my big questions for this course is actually, we're very much at aiming at people wanting to start their own business, you know, this small business ideal. I think we'd, if we want to g gasp the entrepreneurial spirit, it's about also the people who work as a freelancer or, or, a, or a shoestring operation, and the people who want to be entrepreneurial within incumbent companies. It's not only the small business. Uh, Charo's research showed that not that many people want to start their own business, actually. They want to be entrepreneurial, but they don't want to necessarily start their own business. So expand the model also to the needs and the wants of the students who get uh, would be a good idea, I would say. Um, we did a research two or three years ago to the creative industry, say, how many small businesses are there? What we found, actually, that we found mostly small businesses. We found mostly very, very small businesses. You know, people working alone. We have this idea that there are this, you know, like this, just people, you know, 12 people, 20 people. This is not a typical uh, uh, new business. A new business is somebody working alone. Or we have something called a bread fund. You work and you have a colleague who does the same or two. And if you are ill, he takes over. So you don't lose customers uh, like that. But it is, so we find a lot of very, very small. And we find huge businesses. And the whole group in between is not that big, actually. The last, we did the research in all hyper-local models in the Netherlands. And what we found, actually, is mostly were small operations. I will show you a graph. Um, 85 were one-man bands, or one-woman bands, I should say. There are small chains having two to three local sites. There's only one, s one chain with more than 20 and one between 16 and 20 sites. So this is the, 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 uh, the diversion. So we have see very, ma this is not small business. This is one person business. And it's like you said, well, if the one who runs the business gets ill or gets a, another job, the business is gone. There was a research in the, in the UK on hyperlocal businesses. And this was one of the most common grounds of ending a business. If the, the one who was behind it was ill or, got, or, or moved, the business was gone. So we, we're not talking about you know, this ideal of the small business of a dozen people. So when we look at media, actually, we see this shift. Ambitions, audience, and activity go like that. A lot of businesses want to be here, actually. You know, have a print, because uh, if you have a print publication, prices for advertising are much better than for, for digital advertising. So if you have a newspaper and you can have only a, a weekend edition for print, this is the ideal that most of the companies are thinking about, or being all digital. And we're moving to that area. What does this mean for the workforce? In, I can, cannot back this up with real data, actually, uh, because data on workforce is very, particular flexi flexible data is very hard to get by. But um, we, have a f we have a strong feeling that the number of people doing what we call atypical work, you know, temporarily, uh, part-time, uh, freelancing, uh, is growing. I wouldn't call it atypical anymore, actually. I would call that typical work for media. If we have 70% freelancers, small newsrooms, outsourcing, flexible skin, the non-newsroom work would be typical new, uh, work now. So we're moving to that kind of work. What we're talking about is you know, moving from print to digital, uh, or being more digital. Uh, a lot of companies are actually s still attached to the digital 
platform because of advertising prices uh, and there's a high demand for print actually uh, it's not that everybody wants to go digital but there is a trend of course but we see a lot of digital only startups uh, some of them are incumbents who lost their uh, print uh, uh, publications not that many actually but most of them are startups small startups who do digital news work so what about revenues and what about the workforce In terms of revenues, if you move, this is a driver, I say, if you move from print to digital, you move from a position where you were the near monopolist in an area, probably. You could charge high prices. You could charge three to 600 euros for a subscription to a newspaper, or 200 for a magazine, stuff like that. And, and prices of advertising are still very good. So, but you move to a very competitive environment where people don't want to pay anything, advertisers want to pay very little, and the audience is very unfaithful. They will leave you uh, overnight, so they will not keep the subscription for 20 or 40 years, actually. They will leave you. First. So this is the driver, I think, for the whole thing, that we, we are moving for a cheaper and more flexible uh, workforce. For journalists, people working in, in this, we should aim of course for the flexible that's that's our chance not for the cheaper but we have to bear in mind that what I want is cheaper workforce so what does it mean we need attitudes I think so uh, only not only for small businesses but also for freelancers and also for people working in incumbent companies I talked to the people of the Telegraph it was the newest is the biggest newspaper in the Netherlands and they said we want entrepreneurial people in the newsroom you know we don't want the people who sit back and get an assignment no, anybody can give you an assignment. There's so much content. We need people with new ideas, within, not only outside. We need them inside the newsroom as well. So that's my suggestion for expanding uh, the idea. So I have, and this is the last slide I made up during the last discussions. W what, what are the big questions, actually, uh, that we want to uh, uh, have? Uh, do we have regular courses? Do we have this incubator or this pressure cooker? Uh, I, I don't have the answer. I think we should teach skills, attitudes, but also knowledge on stuff, you know, how to make a budget. Uh, uh, uh. And this is important. Do, do we target individuals? Do we target small schemes? Do we target incumbent media? Uh, um, how do we deal with entrepreneurship within incumbent media? We try to avoid it. We say, okay, set up a new medium. No, set up a medium within, or develop a service for an incumbent medium, which would be another uh, 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 assignment as well. How can research put in? How can academics do research? We, we have so many examples. I said we have now a rich world for research for what works and what doesn't work. What what is a good example? What, so I think we should mo do more research on this also on the workforce. Uh, what disciplines do we need? Do we need design, coding, economics, marketing? Uh, that, that I think there was a question on diversity or, or on, on the team. What kind of people do you need? Do you want to bring in? And this is a more of, yeah, okay, what I picked up from this two days or this uh, one and a half day now is what we want students is to develop ideas actually, to be creative, to deal with failure, you know? It's nothing wrong with failure, uh, uh, you know, at least you tried. And to build a network. And it's so important to have a network, to have followers on Twitter, so not after you graduated, but during your, your, your study. This is something students don't grasp at you. I, I will do that when I graduate. No, that's too late probably. Uh, but also, journalists are very bad with numbers. They love numbers, but they are very bad with counting. You know, they cannot even count three numbers in a row uh, without making two failures, uh, two mistakes in that. But they have to be good at numbers, at metrics, at budgets, stuff like that. So that's, a, that's something we want to teach them. And this is the ad. Okay, thank you.